The new Microsoft Edge has been built on the Chromium platform, so it's a lot like Google Chrome in essence, but it does have some other cool features. And in particular, most of this video, I'm going to focus on something called Collections, which I think is the best update to have happened to any web browser since multiple tabs. I love this feature. Hello, my name is David Benheim and I have tons of videos on my channel about Excel, PowerPoint, and other software apps like Zoom, Teams. If you like this video, then please consider subscribing because I release about two new videos every week with more great content. This video is going to focus on the collections feature, but I have another video talking about other comparisons between Google Chrome and Edge. Finally, please stick around for the end of this video to learn how to download Edge because there is confusingly a difference between the Edge that comes pre-installed on your Windows 10 and the Edge that you need to download that is essentially the new version of that Edge. And what I'm showing you today is all the new Edge stuff. So here, for example, I have buy a new tie one and I can see all of my ties, the pictures there compared to each other. That's pretty cool. And um, obviously I don't want all of this to appear in the bookmarks that I use all the time. So it's nice to just have it as a sidebar that's very visual over here as well. If you want to just get to all of these items, you can click here and choose open all and it opens up a whole new window with all of these links there. So that can be a really quick way of getting to this, you know, say you're shopping for a new tie, maybe for a gift or something else, you can get that really, really easily. Um, there are loads of use cases for this. So coronavirus news, I use this to keep up to date with all of my coronavirus news. Um, I live in Cambodia, so I have everything from a Google search that I can just open one by one here that has the news in the last 24 hours for that. Um, or the COVID-19 data dashboard that we've built inside my company. It's just really good way to group together these bookmarks and get to it, especially when they're sort of short lived a little bit like what I showed you there. Um, it's also really good for a uh, travel log. So you can just sort of see things to do places to stay when you go on this trip. And again, loads of other things. So to monitor recent blog posts that I wrote for uh, the UK Accounting Institute or my YouTube videos performance or some accounting things that I need to do every month in my company, be it log into my QuickBooks accounting software, get my bank information, uh, some notes that I can add and where to get the exchange rates and things like that. I'll go from zero. So click on this and then choose start new collection. So this is going to be new phone research. And I'm going to look for, for example, iPhone new model like this. This is everything that's coming to this one. So I'm going to add the current page like that. Or I can also add specific things. So if I want to look for something else, a new pixel phone, and I can add the current page, but I can also just right click on an image, for example, and add to collections like that one. And it will just add a really big one there. Well, that's maybe not what I want. So I'm going to delete that one. You can also just select whatever you want like this and right click add to collections. So I'm going to search for the iPhone 11, which is the current one. And then I can just sort of right click there and add to collections. And I want to make it clear that this is the iPhone. It does sort of say it there, but it's maybe not that clear. So I can add a note uh, that's formatted and I can say iPhone uh, features and just move that sort of between those. So yeah, you can add either a whole page, you can add an image, you could add just a series of text that you select like this. Now, um, this does then allow you to say copy all. So let's say you want to select all this and send it to someone by email. So you can just open your outlook or whatever it is you use and just open it up in an email 
and then just sort of paste that and you get all of the links and everything else about that. So that can be a really good way to share with other people what you found. Another feature, if you do add things from Amazon, so here I'm looking for a microphone stand and let me look for something here. And so I'm going to find one that is kind of nice. So this one, here's a really cool trick. If you want this to open up in a new window, just hold down the control key as you click it. I'm going to do that for a couple of them. And this is really good for just looking up various different things. Now, if you want this, you can just sort of add this current page and add this one as well. And now once you have a lot of them, you can press here and you can send to Excel. So it sends it to an Excel file that gets stored either in your company SharePoint or in your own personal OneDrive. It takes a little bit of time to load, but it does show you this in Excel online. You can if you want to open this in Excel desktop as well. But look at that. It's given the price, the rating, number of reviewers, uh, where to get it, etc. Isn't that cool? So the ones that are an image don't sort of have that breakdown, but the ones later on where I just add the page, they have the rating and sometimes they have this other thing. It's a little bit unpredictable whether it will give you the price and the ratings or not uh, from my experience. And also if you look at sites that are not Amazon, it hasn't worked for me yet. So I imagine there's more sources that they'll add in the future. But for me, it was only working with Amazon sites for getting those details. Great, so let's look at some other ones that I have. I just was doing some research on the Excel data visualizer add-in. So here I just looked up what these different symbols mean. For that, I have a link to a video that I do. Um, I even can do a Google search. So like I had with the coronavirus thing, so I could have a Cambodia coronavirus Google search, but then I can also go to news and a lot of people don't know about this feature, but you can go to tools and choose everything from the past 24 hours. And now everything that I look for will get me directly here. You could also have pre-saved searches in Facebook and Twitter. I could also add a Google image search with a really cool trick that not many people know. So I'm going to look for flowcharts and click on images. And like we had it with news, the tools button is even more useful with images. So you could say color is transparent. If you want this to look good in a slide, you could say size is large, like that. And then I can just sort of add this page with all of those search filters as well to all of this here. Um, I could go to Twitter. And in Twitter, I could say, for example, uh, Excel flowcharts, uh, the latest posts from people who I follow like that. And then I could add current page and it's with all of those search parameters like that. So a really, really useful way to do research, however you do it, wherever you do it. Again, if you want to open any of these links up, hold down control and click this, by the way, works in any browser, and then it will open up everything that I've just added here. Um, as I said, you can, if you want to just sort of add these as favorites or bookmarks, and then it shows up up here. But if it's something that is related to a short term repeated thing that you will research a lot, or maybe a series that you don't want to get that often, then I find that this works really, really well by adding it to this thing. Um, a little quick tip for uh, having favorites. If you know what a symbol means, what a logo means, you don't have to write it up. So what I see a lot of people doing is they'll maybe add this for Twitter and then it will say name home Twitter. I don't need that to happen. All I need to do is press the backspace, press done, and then it just adds that icon. The only time I need a little bit of text is when it's not obvious from the logo what it does. 
So here, this is, for example, a Microsoft Creators form in Microsoft Forms. Uh, these are abbreviations for a specific Google Sheet that I tend to use a lot of. Uh, and this is a folder with more. But in general, I do just know the logo, so I don't need it, which means I can just squeeze a lot more in there. So there's another tip there. Oh, and finally here, uh, we looked at all of these except for center word. So center word creates a word document, a lot like the Excel one. It's faster to load and it will sort of give you ideas and links to everything that you mean. I will say that this one has come out quite well. It has given me the text, the links in certain cases, but it's a little bit hit and miss. Like, you know, here I have the YouTube video. It's not organized that well. And it's a little bit unpredictable when it gives you the image versus when it doesn't. As you can see, it hasn't got the thumbnail for that specific video. Uh, I don't find this works that well. Um, although in Excel, or the word one, you can click open in desktop app if you want to just open it. So now it's just editable like a normal Microsoft Word document. Of course, if you don't have Office 365, then you don't get the auto save working quite as well. Managing collections is pretty simple. You can sort of select one or multi-select and bin them if you want to get rid of them. Or from here, you can also right click and choose to open all, open all in new window or in private window. That's Edge's equivalent of an incognito window in Google Chrome. Edit collection just takes you to this page. So if you are going to use the export to Excel or Word file, just know that it doesn't refresh. So when you add something new to the collection, it's not linked to then upload it here. Now, as I said before, the default edge that you get with Windows 10 is not the one that I'm demoing here. This one is the new edge. So to get it, you just search for it. So right, download edge. And then you have download new Microsoft Edge browser. And then you just sort of follow the instructions on here. Download for Windows 10. You also have equivalents for Mac OS, iOS, and Android or other Windows versions. Then you just follow the instructions as you go along. It is expected that in a release of Windows 10 later this year, the new Edge will be the default browser, which I really hope because it's so much better now that it's built on Chromium. All right, so if you like this video, then please hit the like button and you can subscribe for more great content on software tech and how to use it.